Hi, Sec 2. So for today's lesson, we will be talking about the Maria Hertog riots. And this has contributed significantly also during the post-war period, which is where we are for our content now. Alright, so please refer to pages 48 to 50 of your textbook and page 15 of your content package, which is an empty page. But I will tell you when and what to write down for your notes. Alright. Let's start off with the lesson objectives. For today's lesson, we would be able to describe the events that occurred during the Maria Hertog riots. And of course, even after knowing the story, we need to know what is the significance of the riots during the post-war period. Okay? So, I'm going to introduce a few characters to you for this story. Some of you may have heard of her before already, but... For those who haven't, okay, I'm going to introduce this character to you. She is known as Maria. Some of the stories that are written are also referring to her as Najra, which you will know why later. Okay, the story of Maria or Najra, who were involved? Maria Hertog, right in the middle, she is the main character. Okay, then we have four other supporting characters. The Malay community. Che Amina, which is her foster mother, the Hertogs, which are her birth parents, and the British, which are the colonial rulers of Singapore. Alright, so let's start the story. Number one, how did it all start? So some background information about Maria Hertog. She was born to Dutch Eurasian parents, but her parents were arrested and jailed during the Japanese occupation. So they passed her to Che Amina, her foster mother, during the war. And therefore, she was raised a Muslim. So Che Amina herself gave her a name, Najra, which is her Muslim name. That's why the story is called Maria and Najra. Alright? Number two, what happened after the war? At the end of the war, Maria's Dutch parents wanted to reunite with her and take her back. Okay, but of course Che Amina as a foster mother didn't want to and it led to a custody battle in Singapore's High Court. So they were fighting for control or uh, custody over Maria Hertog. Then number 3, May 1950. The High Court ruled that Maria be returned to her natural Dutch parents because they were her birth parents. And of course, the perspective of Che Amina, she will be feeling very devastated and of course, angry. Okay, so the picture on the right, you can see this is the picture of them outside the court and their faces show their true feelings that happened when they found out the verdict. Okay, then on July 1950, Che Amina filed an appeal. Okay, and she wanted Maria to be back with her under her custody. And successfully, the court decided that the custody be returned to Che Amina. So you can see on the newspaper on the right, Maria has a special Hari Raya feast. Why? Because she was returned to Che Amina. And at the bottom, it also says that don't ever call me Maria. Naja shided me when I chatted with her. I've done with the Hertog family and my real Muslim name is Naja. So from this newspaper article, you can also see Maria Hertog's perspective and who she wants to be with at the end of this whole decision, which is her foster mother. Next month, in August 1950, Maria married a Malay teacher at 13 years old. Why? Because both her and her foster mother thought that this would prevent her from being taken away because now she's married legally to a Malay teacher, right? So they thought that this decision would be better so that her foster mother can have custody of her. However, in November 1950, the court ruled that Maria be returned to her Dutch parents. Why? Because the Dutch law did not recognize the marriage since she was underage and her natural father didn't consent to the marriage. Okay, because her birth parents are Catholic. And then after which Maria was placed in a Catholic convent. 
So this picture shows Maria talking to her birth mother and her feelings towards her. So if you look at the words below, this is her talk schools, Maria. Why do you say you did not want to see me? Maria replies, I am not going away from here where my husband is. I will stay with him now until we die. So from this photo, you can actually see the tension between her birth mother and Maria and Maria's real affiliation towards her foster mother, which she is holding, right? Before we go on with the story, we first need to pause and think at this stage, how did it affect the whole community and the other characters? Okay, number one, the Malay community was upset because they felt that their law was not respected. Because the Dutch law did not recognize the Malay marriage that happened between Maria and her husband. And the next thing, surrounding Maria with the Catholic faith deeply offended the Muslim community. Because there were some photos that were published on the newspapers with Maria being a Muslim, surrounded with all the Catholic symbols okay, and the items. And of course, as the Muslim and Malay community, they would feel upset. Next, we continue on with the story. Number 7. On 11 December 1950, just a month after custody was placed back to her Dutch parents, Che Amina appealed for custody again. But what happened? Unfortunately, the court rejected the appeal within 5 minutes. So you can see in the middle of the picture on the right, Che Amina and Maria being surrounded by a large crowd which gathered at the Padang and started to riot. Right now, at this point of time, the other people of Singapore started to come into the picture and started to support and defend Maria and Che Amina and started to help them fight for their rights. So, number 8. It started with a riot and during the riot, any Eurasian or European who was inside was attacked because it was right now the Malays against the Europeans. Cars were overturned and burnt, and the riots continued on for three days, where a curfew was imposed for two weeks. That means people couldn't come out at night, they had to stay in, and they could only come out at certain times of the day to prevent any escalation of tensions, conflicts, or further riots. In total, the riot accumulated to 18 people who were killed, 173 people who were injured. So on the pictures on the right, you can see the large crowds there, Maria and Chile Amina, and even on the right-hand side, the cars being overturned and burnt. So it got very heated and involved a lot of people in the country. Why? Because... The decision that was made was not accepted by many of the Muslim community and other people as well. Now, number 10, what happened in the end? Maria was relocated to St. John's Island during the riot and subsequently she was taken back to the Netherlands. So the custody again was thrown back or given back to her Dutch parents and she was never seen in Singapore again. Okay, so on the right there, you can see Maria in her later years. And actually, on the right-hand side, that's not Che Amina, but that's a relative of Che Amina. Now, after all the events that has happened, what is the significance of these riots? That's the more important question that we need to ask. Okay, so please take down these notes on page 15 of your content package. Number one, why did the riots take place? Firstly, the locals felt betrayed as they thought the British were taking sides with the Dutch because the Dutch gave custody to Maria or sorry, gave custody to her birth parents instead of her foster mother. So there was already a tension or difference in opinion between the Malay community and the Dutch. Number two, 
the locals felt that the British were insensitive to the feelings of the Malay community. How were they insensitive? It was seen when the Dutch did not even recognize the marriage between the Maria and her husband, the Malay marriage. That is already a sign of insensitivity. Number three, the locals also felt discriminated against and frustrated. Right? They felt that why is the British taking the side of the Dutch instead of taking the side of the locals here, which is the Malays, and giving the custody to Che Amina. So, out of all this, the riots began as a sign of protest against the British. Riot meaning also fight against a certain group or a certain people. Okay, was a sign of protest against the British. Next, another significance of these riots. They clearly expressed anti-British feelings. The locals were clearly unhappy that the British was not taking into consideration their racial and religious sensitivity. Number two, the locals felt that the British were not sensitive enough to their needs and feelings. Alright, so they were again very angry and unhappy, especially when it comes to their culture. So what happened in the end? This paved the way and laid the foundations for the locals to aspire for political independence from the British. That is why in the next part of Singapore's history, eventually people would be becoming more politically conscious. They want to fight for independence. They want to fight for their rights because they were unhappy of how the British treated them. The British who were insensitive to their race and their culture, they wanted to break away from them and gain independence. Alright, so make sure you take down these two slides as your notes. And after that, okay, as a consolidation, in 80 words, describe one of the lessons learned from the Maria Hertog riots in Singapore and explain why. Okay, so for example, one of the lessons is that being respectful and sensitive to each other's cultures because it may even lead up very closely to a conflict or a riot in current Singapore. Okay, and we want you to explain why. Now, how do you submit your answers? Please visit this link and submit it in the URL below. The teachers would be checking whether you have submitted and also to help you see whether you understand the Maria Hertog's Maria Hertog riot properly. Okay, if you want to read up more on these riots, you can actually watch the video or even some readings. One of the readings is here, okay, or even your textbook. So we come to the end of the lesson. I hope that you understand the Maria Hertog riots, but more importantly, understand how it links to the current or that current period in Singapore's history that made people more and more politically conscious in that era. Thank you.